Hello doctors, I hope everyone is doing great. Welcome to Easy Medicine. Today we will discuss Medicine 1 past papers of final year MBBS. And here I have provided you with distribution of marks for Medicine Paper 1. In this video we will discuss Rheumatology. And as you can see you will have one question from this topic in your paper. Before starting I would like to tell you that you will see a blue box in right corner of your screen with every answer so that you can be sure of the answers as all of them are taken from a good UHS recommended book. For your ease I have grouped those questions which have similar diagnosis. So you will see two or even three past questions grouped together as we move forward in the video. Let's begin with our first question. And here is our first question. There are actually three questions from this topic in past papers. Two of them are mentioned here and one you will see ahead in this video. You can stop the video here and try to answer the questions on your own before we discuss them together. Good, so the diagnosis is SLE. I have seen students struggle more with reaching a diagnosis than with answering the subsequent questions. So I will try to discuss some of the points which can lead you to this diagnosis. The points which can lead you to this diagnosis are a butterfly shaped facial rash that worsens with sunlight. This type of rash is called photosensitive rash and pain involving small hand joints and oral ulcers. Since SLE is a multi-system disease, it can involve any organ. An involvement of kidney will result in periorbital puffiness, bilateral pitting edema, protein urea and RBC costs. And here you can see similar points in the third scenario as well and involvement of pleura by SLE will result in dull percussion note and decrease unilateral breath sounds which can be seen in this scenario. Let's see the answers. Here see the diagnosis is SLE. Two of the previous questions asked about diagnostic criteria. So SLE is diagnosed if any four out of these 11 symptoms are present or have occurred in past. These symptoms are malar rash, discoid rash, arthritis, serocytis, hematological disorder, oral ulcers, renal disorder, photosensitivity, anti-nuclear antibody positivity, positive immunology, and neurological disorder. As this diagnostic criteria is asked twice in the past papers, so I have provided you with a mnemonic to remember these symptoms. And the mnemonic is rash or pain as you can see on your screens. You can remember these symptoms by this mnemonic. The other parts of the questions asked about management and as every management it will begin with history and examination and since SLE is a multi-system disease history and examination of every system must be done. The next part of the management is investigations and investigations done in SLE are CBC, ESR, antibody detection and antibodies detected in SLE are anti-nuclear antibody, anti-double-stranded DNA antibody and anti-Smith antibody. The last two are really specific for SLE. The other investigations are urine analysis and serum complement levels. And the last step of the management is treatment, which will begin with educating the patient since it's a long-term disease. Also advise the patient to avoid sunlight and UV light exposure and use sunblocks of factor 25 to 50. Treatment of SLE is divided depending upon the severity of symptoms. So for mild to moderate disease severity, corticosteroids with methotrexate, azathioprine or mycophenolate are given. However, sometimes NSAIDs and hydroxychloroquine are given. For acute flares of the disease, intravenous treatment is given and that involves high dose intravenous corticosteroids with intravenous cyclophosphamide or mycophenolate. And this treatment is applicable for acute worsening of the disease, for example, acute worsening of the renal disease and acute pericarditis which was asked in the previous questions. And after treatment of acute flares, maintenance therapy is given with oral steroids, methotrexate, azathioprine or mycophenolate. And here is the blue box which will give you page number of Davidson's book of medicine from where the answers are taken. Let's do the next question. Please try to read and answer the question on your own before we discuss it together. Very good. So the diagnosis is ankylosing spondylitis. And as I discussed, the important points which can lead you to this diagnosis are 18 year old boy with low back pain which is worse after inactivity and relieved by activity. These are some symptoms which can lead you to ankylosing spondylitis. Let's see the answer. C. The answer is ankylosing spondylitis. The next part of that question asked about investigations. 
and the investigations done in ankylosing spondylitis are x-ray of sacroiliac joint lateral x-ray of spine mri of sacroiliac joint and this is more sensitive investigation than previous one and also you can test for hla b27 and as you can see in the x-ray there is fusion of sacroiliac joints and also fusion of vertebral bodies this gives the spine an appearance of bamboo giving it the name bamboo spine one important point that i would like to discuss here is that hla b27 is associated with four diseases these are ankylosing spondylitis psoriatic arthritis arthritis associated with inflammatory bowel disease and reactive arthritis this might be important in some of your mcqs the next part of the question asked about extraarticular manifestations these are anterior uveitis and as you can see in this picture it will be seen as a red eye the other extraarticular manifestations are prostatitis cardiac defects which can be aortic or mitral incompetence amyloidosis pulmonary fibrosis the last part of the question asked about the risk of transmission of this disease to the kids so a patient with positive hla b27 have one in two chances of their children being affected since hla related diseases are transmitted in this fashion and here is the blue box in which you will find the page number of the witson's book of medicine from where the answer is taken let's read the next question please read the question and try to answer before we discuss it together very good so the answer to this question is Raynaud's disease and the points which led us to this diagnosis are pallor and cyanosis of hand fingers which can be precipitated by cold let's see the answer see here the answer is Raynaud's disease the second part of the question asked about treatment so the treatment for Raynaud's disease is avoiding exposure to cold and trauma calcium channel blockers example nifedipine prostacycline infusions one important point to discuss here is that sympathectomy is not helpful in primary disease the last part of the question asked about the prognosis of this disease so prognosis of Raynaud's disease is generally good however severe vasospasm can lead to ulceration and necrosis of fingers Raynaud's disease can also be initial symptom of various autoimmune diseases example rheumatoid arthritis sle and also systemic sclerosis or scleroderma and here you can see picture of hand with ulceration and necrosis of tips of finger this can be the eventual result of Raynaud's disease and as discussed a blue box in which you will find the witson's page number from where the answer is taken let's move to the next question you can stop the video here read the question and try to answer on your own before we discuss it together all right since the question asked about differential diagnosis so you must know what diseases can cause sudden onset monoarthritis let's see the diseases which can cause acute onset monoarthritis so the diseases are septic arthritis pseudo gout gout and reactive arthritis the second part of the question asked about investigations so the first investigation is joint aspiration and microscopic examination of joint aspirate this is the most important investigation remember that the investigation which can make diagnosis in these cases is joint aspirate and microscopic examination of that aspirate the other investigations which can be done in these cases are cbc esr and crp blood and joint aspirate cultures x-ray of the joint the third part of the question asked about what treatment can be given in initial 24 hours so the treatment in initial 24 hours will depend upon the differential diagnosis that we discussed earlier and the treatment involve antibiotics which involve fluoxetine however if the patient is allergic you can use clindamycin analgesics which involve NSAIDs and repeated aspiration of the joint to dryness and here is the blue box in which you will find the witson's page number from where the answer is taken let's move to the next question you can stop the video here and try to answer the question on your own before we discuss them together excellent so the diagnosis is rheumatoid arthritis and as i discussed the students mainly struggle with reaching a diagnosis than with answering the subsequent questions so i will try to solve that problem by giving you some important points by which you can reach this diagnosis and they are pain in small joints of the hands and morning stiffness which can last for 1 to 2 hours 
students mainly struggle with differentiating rheumatoid arthritis from osteoarthritis. So the important points which can differentiate rheumatoid arthritis from osteoarthritis is that rheumatoid arthritis involves metacarpophalangeal and proximal interphalangeal joints and there is morning stiffness which can last for 1 to 2 hours. In osteoarthritis, there is involvement of proximal and distal interphalangeal joints and there is morning stiffness which lasts mostly for less than 30 minutes. These points can help you differentiate osteoarthritis from rheumatoid arthritis while reaching a diagnosis. Let's see the answers now. See here the diagnosis is rheumatoid arthritis and the second part of the question asked about investigations and investigations which can be done are ESR and CRP levels and serological investigations which can be done are rheumatoid factor and anti citrullinated peptide antibody assay. This antibody assay is more specific for diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. Radiological investigations which can be done are X-ray of small joints of hands and feet, ultrasound or MRI of the joints. The second question also asked about the radiological findings on X-ray. These are periarticular osteoporosis, marginal joint erosions and sclerosis of joint space. And here you can see in the X-ray of the hand that there is periarticular osteoporosis, sclerosis of the joint space, and joint erosions. The last part of the question asked about treatment. So the treatment involves general measures which are physical rest and passive exercises. Symptomatic control can be achieved by NSAIDs and corticosteroids. Progression of the disease can be controlled by DMARDs which stand for disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. These include methotrexate, sulfasalazine, hydroxychloroquine, leflunomide, gold, penicillamine. However, if the progression is still not controlled, then biological agents are used, which are anti-TNF alpha drugs, including infliximab, etanercept, and other biological agents, which are rituximab and abatacept. These DMARDs and biological agents are mainstay of the treatment for rheumatoid arthritis. And here is the blue box in which you will find the page number of Davidson's Book of Medicine from where the answer is taken. Let's move to the next question. You can stop the video here and read the question before we discuss it together. Very good. So the diagnosis is systemic sclerosis. And an important point which can lead you to this diagnosis is tightness of skin of hands and face. This is a cardinal symptom of systemic sclerosis. Let's see the answer. See, here the diagnosis is systemic sclerosis. The next part of the question asked about one complication in GIT, pulmonary and renal systems. So, the complication of renal system is systemic hypertension. In pulmonary system, it is pulmonary hypertension. And as you can see in this picture, that in pulmonary hypertension, right heart is enlarged and it will result in right heart failure eventually. The complication in GIT system is gastroesophageal reflux disease, which you can see in this picture. Third part of the question asked about management and as every management it begins with history and physical examination. The next step in the management is investigations which are anti-centromere and anti-topoisomerase 1 antibody titers, ESR and anti-nuclear antibody assay. The last step in management is treatment and the treatment is given for complications of this disease. For example, proton pump inhibitors for treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disease, ACE inhibitors for hypertension, Byzantin for pulmonary hypertension, and calcium channel antagonists for Raynaud's disease. As I discussed before, that Raynaud's disease can occur in systemic sclerosis, and NSAIDs can be given for arthralgias, which can occur in systemic sclerosis. And here is the Davidson's page number from where the answer is taken. Let's move to the next question. Please stop the video here and try to answer the question on your own before we discuss it together. So, the diagnosis is acute gout and some important points which can lead you to this diagnosis are history of hypertension which is important because patients with hypertension are usually given thiazide diuretics and thiazide diuretics are a risk factor for acute gout and another important point which is present in this scenario is acute onset of excruciating pain in his big toe. We know that gout usually presents with involvement of big toe first so these points can lead you to the diagnosis of gout. Let's see the answer. See, here the answer is acute gout. The second part of the question asked about investigations. 
So the first investigation is joint aspiration and microscopic examination of that aspirate. And as I discussed previously in the video that whenever you are presented with acute monoarthritis, the most important investigation for diagnosis is joint aspiration and microscopic examination of that aspirate. The other investigations which can be done are blood urea nitrogen and creatinine levels and serum uric acid levels. Complete blood count which will show neutrophilia in acute gout. ESR and CRP levels. You can also do joint x-ray. I would like to discuss some important points here which can help you in MCQs. So joint aspirate sample from a patient of gout will show negatively birefringent needle shaped crystals. There is another disease from which the gout needs to be differentiated as it presents with the same symptoms. That disease is pseudogout. It can be differentiated from gout by joint x-ray as in pseudogout joint x-ray will show calcification of the joint because pseudogout occurs due to deposition of calcium crystals and these crystals are rhomboid in shape and when you perform joint aspiration you will see rhomboid shaped crystals in pseudogout. The third part of the question asked about management and as every management it begins with history and physical examination then investigations. Investigations are same as given above. The last step in the management is treatment. So for treatment of acute attack of gout, NSAIDs, local ice packs, colchicine, intra-articular steroids are used. For prevention, allopurinol, fibuxostat or probenicid is used. Avoidance of risk factors such as losing weight, reducing alcohol intake, stopping use of thiazide diuretics and avoiding seafoods is also required for the treatment of gout. And here is the blue box with the page number from where the answer is taken. And this finishes our discussion on rheumatology section of medicine paper 1. Before ending this video, I have some bonus MCQs for you. These MCQs are made from some really important topics. You can solve these MCQs by stopping the video here and write your answers in comments below. I will share the answers to these MCQs in a comment below after a week of uploading this video. If you have any query, feel free to ask in the comments below, I'll be happy to answer. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and share it with your friends so that they can benefit too. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon for upcoming past paper videos. Good luck.